Hey everybody, welcome back to MCU Q&A, the show where we answer your questions about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm your host, Doug Herring, with MCUExchange.com, and first off, I want to apologize that there was no episode last week. Uh, as you might have noticed, I'm not wearing glasses anymore, which is cool. Uh, I got some lasers shot at my face, and now I can see. That's awesome. Uh, so that put me out of commission for the weekend, and I didn't have time to film so, uh, yeah, that's that's why there was no episode last week. Very sorry about that. But we are back on a normal schedule. So, uh, without further ado, let's answer some questions. And please, if you have a question about the MCU, you can email them to me at doug at mcuexchange.com. Or, of course, you can just jump down into the comments below and ask it there. Let's answer some questions. This question comes from Dylan QC, who says, If Marvel and Fox were allowed to share Quicksilver because he relates to both then by that logic, shouldn't Marvel be allowed to use Beast as well? Um, great question, and it's a very common one, but the answer is no. Um, there's a very common misconception about the way the rights work between studios, uh, which is that somehow whichever comic that somebody first appeared in determines where their rights will be, or uh, any character more associated with a certain group will determine where their, which studio has their rights. And that's not the case. I mean, if it was, Marvel wouldn't have the rights to the Inhumans, uh, who first appeared in a Fantastic Four comic. Um, the deals that Marvel made when selling the rights to these characters, to Fox and to Sony uh, and Universal, were very, very specific and very carefully worded. So Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are an exception that was specifically carved out. And, you know, we don't know the exact details of when it was carved out. Maybe from the very beginning. Probably not, though. More likely, they just, they made an argument that these are Avengers characters. We should have the rights to them. How about we share them? It's more likely that these are done on a character-by-character -character basis where there is some confusion, um, but Beast, I don't think, is a character where you could could make that argument, especially not since he's been in the X-Men movies for so long. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's hard to answer this question definitively because we don't know the exact details of the deal that Marvel and Fox made. Um, but it's safe to assume that uh, it, it's very specific and, and targeted towards specific characters. They're not just general, you know, check this box if you want all X-Men characters. Um, so yeah, short answer to your question, no. And if another character shows up in a Fox, uh, or a Fantastic Four or X-Men comic, it doesn't necessarily mean that Fox has the rights to them. Uh, but thanks for your question. Okay, uh, Peepie Gaming Movie Reviews and More wants to know, what are your San Diego Comic-Con predictions? I really think that they'll come out with a Black Panther trailer, and possibly a small Infinity War trailer, uh, just to get the hype up, as well as a Thor Ragnarok trailer. And I think they announced those 2020 movies as well. They really need to hit this one out of the ballpark to get the hype up for Black Panther. Um, yeah, those are great suggestions. I think uh, there's a decent chance that we'll see all of those. Um, I agree. I think Black Panther is the project that they'll really be pushing, because that's the one that's most... Uh, well, at that point, Thor Ragnarok would be the next one, but at that point, it's almost too late to... Uh, release any new trailers. Certainly they'll release maybe a clip or two, um, but I, I actually don't think that Ragnarok will be their main focus at Comic-Con this year. I think it'll be Black Panther and Infinity War. Um, definitely a Black Panther trailer. Around July for Black Panther seems like the right time to get a trailer, so maybe that'll get released to the public, or if not, then maybe August or September we'll get our first trailer for Black Panther. I think there will be an Infinity War clip or teaser shown at Comic-Con or D23, uh, which remember, D23 this year is like a week before San Diego Comic-Con, so there's a decent chance that there's going to be some overlap in what they show at both of those presentations, and if that's the case, the chances of any of it getting released to the public are basically zero. So um, keep that in mind. So unless you're going to Hall H, uh, your your chances of, of seeing a Black Panther or Infinity War trailer during the weekend of Comic-Con are not super high. But yeah, an Infinity War teaser, a Black Panther full trailer, uh, or first trailer, makes sense. A Thor Ragnarok trailer, again, it seems a little late from that, maybe a clip. Um, what else could they show? I don't think they'll announce the 2020 movies. Um, I think that announcing their entire Phase 3 slate was very exciting for fans, but I don't necessarily think it's something they'll repeat. At least not until after Infinity War. For a couple reasons. One... 
they keep saying that the MCU is going to change very drastically after Infinity War, and that even the title of Avengers 4 is a spoiler. If they really mean that, and if that's not marketing talk, I could see them waiting. Because the other nice thing about Marvel is they don't need to do a year or two of marketing. They have built their brand name and their universe to the point where if they wanted to release a movie in May and announce it in April, it would still make hundreds of millions of dollars. So uh, if they wanted to hold off on uh, naming the fourth Avengers movie until uh, May 2018, you know, make it until the post credit scene of Infinity War if they wanted to. I think that would be really, really cool and exciting to do. So I hope they do that. Um, as for announcing the, the Phase 4 slate... It ruins a lot of the surprises, I think. You know, it was awesome knowing that a Black Panther movie was coming five years in advance. But on the other hand, you know, it told us a lot about who was going to survive what movie. Because, sure, there's Thor 3, and we know he's going to be in Infinity War, so we know he survives that. There's Captain America 3, but we, we know everybody survives that. And, and obviously, people surviving is not the only spoiler that you can make, but it's a it's a big enough one that I could see why they'd want to avoid it again. Plus, they had to actually change that slate several times, um, whether it was adding movies like they did with Ant-Man and the Wasp and Spider-Man Homecoming, or um, taking movies off like they did with Inhumans, or just changing the dates around. That slate they announced has actually changed quite a bit, and I could see them using that as a reason not to announce Phase 4. Personally, I also have a theory that Phase 4 will include things that we don't know about yet, like a Fantastic Four deal, um, and so they might be waiting to announce until that's all official. So no, I don't think we'll get any 2020 movies uh, at San Diego Comic-Con this summer, but I do think everything else you mentioned, pretty good chance. Although how much of that we'll actually get to see, who knows. This is a question that I have been asked by multiple different people in multiple different places, so I'm just going to credit it to everybody. So everybody asks me, if Marvel and Fox made a deal, how would you bring the Fantastic Four into the MCU, and who would you cast? Great question, everybody, um, but not an easy one to answer. So that's why I've been putting it off for a little while. But I think I have an answer that I'm mostly satisfied with, so I'll try and answer it here. Um, so I'll start with how I would bring them in, then I'll get to the cast. There's a very popular idea, and I don't remember, and I don't know whose original idea it was. I've seen it floating around a bunch of different places for a while. Um, but there's there's a very popular idea saying that they should bring the Fantastic Four into the MCU uh, by making their origin story take place in the 60s, when the characters were created. That way you keep that... 60s aesthetic and you bring them into the future into the present day through some time travel shenanigans that's a fine idea um and i'm sure it could be done really really well but it's not really the idea that i want to see personally i find characters out of time a little gimmicky um kind of uninteresting I think one of the greatest things that the Captain America movies did is they, they kind of got rid of that aspect of his character very, very quickly. You know, he still has some touches of, uh, you know, remembering what it used to be like or remember some comment about how he's 100 years old. Those are great. But if Captain America 2 was all about him trying to figure out his cell phone, then that movie would have sucked. So I, I would go a different route. And the route seems obvious, which is after Infinity War, humans are going to have a lot of good reasons to go out and try and explore space and try and figure out what the hell just happened and figure out wormholes and really start to bring Earth onto a cosmic level so that it can enter an intergalactic society and start having regular contact with friendly alien species and also prepare themselves for contact with alien species that aren't so friendly. So that is when a agencies like S.W.O.R.D. makes a lot of sense. That is when another space race makes a lot of sense. And, and I think you launch the cosmic side of the MCU, which Feige and Gunn have already talked about how it's going to happen after Infinity War. The MCU is going cosmic, right? So you're already launching this cosmic side. I think the way to do it is with the Fantastic Four. These are people, you know, these brilliant scientists who just saw... Aliens come down for the second, third, fourth, what, however many times it's been that aliens have come to Earth now, we're, we're sick of it. We need to get on their level. And so you have Reed and Sue um, as these 
scientists at the forefront of space travel. And then you do their, you know, cosmic rays, you turn it into some extra dimensional stuff or a wormhole. What You modify their origin so it makes a little bit more sense, but essentially it's the exact same thing. They go into space looking for something weird. They find something weird. They come back with powers. Very, very simple. Um, but it makes, it just, it seems like now is the perfect time to do it. So that is how I'd bring them in. I, I, it would be a very straight up origin story. I wouldn't make Doom the villain right away. Uh, I, I don't know who would be the villain for their first movie, but Doom would be introduced in the first movie and then would become the villain in the second or third, kind of like how they set up Mordo and Doctor Strange. I really like that. So as for the cast, um, some people have talked about bringing the Fantastic Four really back to their roots, uh, like they are with Spider-Man, and I like that idea. And some people will remember that originally the Fantastic Four, Johnny was was much younger. He was he was Sue's kid brother. Um, he's roughly Spider Man's age. I don't love that for the MCU. I do think it's a great idea to make Johnny noticeably younger uh, than than the rest of the family. But to the point of bring him to teenager to make him a high school student. Why is a high school student going into space? It just doesn't make any sense. And and. Also, it's not what I want in the MCU. Spider-Man as one young character is great because he's different, and that that is a new and interesting dynamic to have on the Avengers. I don't want two teenagers. I don't want three. I One is enough. Um, so I do have Johnny as he's about 10 years younger than Sue in my cast, so I'll just get to it. So I'll start with Johnny. I have him as Zac Efron. I think he has established himself as a really strong comedic actor. And of course, he looks the part, he looks like a cocky, uh, smarmy guy, you know, put him just out of college, 25, 26 years old. Um, whereas, yeah, Sue and everybody else would be in their late 30s or early 40s, somewhere around there. And I think he could play Johnny's cockiness and smartassness really, really well, but also he can play a hero. Um, Rosamund Pike, I have as Sue. Uh, I loved her in Gone Girl, and I think Sue is a potentially very problematic character. She's very... She doesn't have a lot of agency. She's pretty uh, useless in the early comics. And they need to get around that. And so they need to do that by casting an actress who really just stands on her own no matter what. Um, And for me, Rosamund Pike is a perfect example of that. I'd also like Emily Blunt in the MCU in some way. And if this is a way to do it, then sure, why not? But Rosamund Pike's my first choice. For Reed, uh, I like Ewan McGregor. He, I mean, come on. He, he, do I need to say more? He'd, he'd be perfect. He was the best part of the prequels. He looks like Reed. He, he, yeah, he'd be great. Um, and then for Ben, for The Thing, I have Alan Tudyk. Um, Firefly, Moana. He's done a lot of voice acting recently. He was K2SO in Rogue One. Steve the Pirate in Dodgeball, his most underrated role, in my opinion. The dude is incredible. I want him in the MCU, and like I said, he's really especially great at voice acting. He brings a lot of heart and humor to his characters that he voices, and that those are two things that Ben needs a whole lot of. Um, yeah, maybe he doesn't look like... I mean, I think Michael Chiklis, uh, who played him in the horrible Fantastic Four movies... Sorry, the first horrible Fantastic Four movie... Um, he looked the part for Grimm, uh, for Ben Grimm, really, really well. But I think that is so much less important than somebody who can do the do, bring uh, a lively voice acting job because you know the the plastic styrofoam suit that they used in that just didn't work. Obviously, thing is going to be mostly CGI and mocap. So really, you're looking for a great voice actor, and Alan Tudyk is, in my opinion, one of the best we have right now. So I want him as the thing. Um, so yeah, that is my cast for the Fantastic Four and how I would bring them into the MCU. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, this question comes from Philip Wilson, who says, If Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gets renewed for a fifth season, fingers crossed, what pod would you like to see them start off with? In my opinion, I think a Man-Thing pod would be brilliant. It could continue the mystical themes that were introduced in the first half of this season while introducing a horror element. 
completely agree. I'm not even going to try and suggest something else because, Philip, I think you nailed it. Man Thing's a great character. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a great spot for him. And like you said, bringing more mystical stuff and horror stuff into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. lets it do something totally different. And what we've learned from Season 4 is that S.H.I.E.L.D. Is at, is at its best when it's doing something totally different. Ghost Rider was unlike anything else that we've had on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's also some of the weirdest stuff that we've gotten in the MCU. Um, same with the Darkhold, same with uh, the LMD arc, same with uh, this this framework, the, the Agents of Hydra arc. The framework, the, we have alternate realities in the MCU now. Who would have thought we'd get introduced to that on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Um, so I completely agree what they're doing now, the direction they're going of getting really out there, really into the comic book stuff. I love it. Uh, that is what they need to be doing. So keep doing that. And yeah, man thing has already been mentioned on agents of shield, uh, with, um, what's her face, Maria Hill saying in, I think season one of agents of shield, or am I thinking of, or is this iron man three? No, it's a, I don't remember when she says she had to explain to Congress who or what is a man thing. Um, gosh, was that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or was that Iron Man? No, that was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Doesn't matter. Um, correct me in the comments. I know I'm going to be wrong. Uh, but anyway, when she says that, I think, uh, Man-Thing is, is the obvious choice <clears throat> for, for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5. So yeah, perfect suggestion. I'm with you. Well, that's going to be it for this week's episode of MCU Q&A. As always, thank you so much for asking those questions, everybody. And keep the questions coming. Again, just comment below in the comment section, or you can email them to me at doug at mcuexchange.com. Make sure you're following us on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to us on YouTube. Like the video. Do all that fun social media stuff. I don't have to tell you. Please do it. It really helps us out. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see you next week.